me better than I know myself, and you've known me longer than anyone else. Such knowledge is too wonderful. Understand it. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I can't even comprehend it. But I know you see. Plunge the depths where I could make my bed But I never went high and see You're so good at finding me Only lost in the mystery Of the depth of your love Your hand will hold me still Even where Even where my world is shaking Your hand will hold me still I'm fearfully
Lakeside. I'm Carly. I'm the worship leader at Lakeside here. We are excited to connect with you today and create a unique worship experience from our homes um, that will just build community among us. We are coming to you from Rachel and John Heinen's living room. And if you are joining us live this morning, we would encourage you to use the chat to share a greeting or a prayer during our prayers of the people time. But we want to begin with a worship song. Um, so either just receive this song or read the lyrics on your screen or even sing along with us as Mark and I lead you in worship. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb. sing for all that you've done for me. And as we enter into a time of prayer, we're going to be guided by the prayers of the people where we stop and pause and we, we ask God as a community to hear our prayers together. We're going to begin by praying for 
the global concerns that's going on that's facing so many of the people around the world and then bringing it down to our nation and then next into our community. And so we're going to invite you to pray along with us. And if you're on the online church platform, we invite you to add your prayers as we pause before we're singing the response uh, to the song in which we sing together. So as we enter into this time of prayer, this is a time for us to be united, to be in whatever space that you're coming from, that we would be listening and praying and, and bringing our hearts to God. And so let's begin with this song, that we'll begin singing the song together and pause and enter into a time of prayer. Join us for the prayers of the people. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God, as we come to you, the Bible tells us that when we pray that you will answer your people, that we call upon your name, that you will deliver them. And so right now, God, we ask that you would heal those who are sick, those who are carrying the COVID-19 virus without knowing it. Would you heal them and protect those around them? God, we ask that you provide a cure for this virus and heal our economy to bring a quick and a miraculous end to the darkness that seems to be covering our world. Whether your healing comes today, next week, or next month, we believe that you will heal our world. And we will continue to praise you even as we wait for answers. God, please deliver us. We, we remember and we pray for the kids in parts of the world that don't even have access to clean water to simply wash their hands. God, we ask that you protect them. Life is already hard and life is already fragile and it doesn't seem fair. While we here in our communities still drive through for food and even coffee. God, so we pray and we ask that you mobilize resources to bring relief and to slow the spread of this virus to the most vulnerable. Now God, as we pray as a community, join our hearts together. Lord, hear our prayers. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. God, we pray for our nation. All authority is yours. And you have given authority to leaders to protect and to guide us. And today, God, we ask that you would give all of our leaders wisdom beyond their years, discernment, strength, and resolve. Keep them healthy and rested so that they can continue to guide us through this troubling time. Give our government leaders wisdom about what the needs are and how to do them well to stop this virus and stabilize our economy. God, give our spiritual leaders your discernment and how to meet people's needs as they come together to glorify your name and encourage the church that is scattered about our nation. Give our medical leaders insight into how to stop the virus, strengthen their resolve, and honor their hard work in creating a treatment for this virus. God, we lift up to you the city of New York and the surrounding areas that seems to be hit so hard. God, I ask for a prayer of protection over the medical staff, over the EMTs that are responding, over the fire and the police departments. God, that you would protect them. Would you protect their families as they serve and selflessly give? Protect that city. Protect our nation. God, would you unite us in the division that we have experienced, that we might become one, one nation under your reign.
Lord, hear our prayers. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. Yeah, we pray for our community. And right now, being alone is hard. We're created for community, not confinement. But we're grateful that no matter how alone we may feel, your promise is still true that you will never leave us or forsake us. And we are grateful, God, even for technology and the simple ways that it helps us stay in touch with one another. Through FaceTime with grandparents, through messages sent, through pictures of joy being shared amongst young kids, the ways in which teachers and educators and school leaders can connect with their students that are at home. Today, God, please remind us that this time of social distancing and isolation will not last forever. Give us the strength to endure this difficult season and deepen our connection with you and with your people. God, would you empower us with an extra dose of your love, of your peace, of hope and joy because we need it. Remind us of your promise and please heal our community. God, I, I want to say thank you for our Lakeside community and how we come around each other to encourage and to meet our needs through a quick hello, a shout of a text, through the tangible provision of shared resources. God, we ask that you bless our neighbors and give us an opportunity to respond, to serve them, and to love them in real ways. May we be the church scattered but yet united in vision and mission. Lord, hear our prayers. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. We are glad that you have joined us here for Lakeside as we have created this worship experience to try to connect all of us here together. And, and with that, it's an incredible opportunity to be online and to come together in ways that we haven't been yet before. And so we want to say welcome, and, and we are glad to be together. Um, there's a few things that we just want to share in, in the community and in the life of Lakeside. And and if you, we want to continue to broaden the ways in which we connect people, and one way to do that is through our weekly emails and updates. If you haven't yet received our weekly update, we're going to invite you to go online uh, to lakesidecov.org slash connect, and there you can fill out a simple, quick little form to join our, our weekly updates and our, and our uh, email push that we get out, fun information, in, in, invitations to join us uh, for special events online. And, and a great way to connect. There's that connect tab and just click on that and join us in filling out uh, kind of a contact form. Also, as we've gathered together, we just want to say thank you from the Lakeside leadership. Thank you from, from the bottom of my heart for your continued support of this ministry. And we're going to invite you each week, uh, if you haven't yet participated in the online offering, it's a way to make sure that we have a strong and healthy ministry moving forward and we can continue gathering people uh, far and wide through this, this platform. Also, we've been promoting this way of uh, sharing uh, an incredible event called the Global 6K to support world vision and clean water projects around the world. And there's been this question of, well, how could we still do this 6K, which represents the distance that the average kid has to walk to go fetch water, to get water that is often unsafe. And so we are still going to do the Global 6K. We're going to move it to the Sunday. So it's going to be a Sunday one 
Sunday fun day, run day, or walk day, whatever it might be, but we're going to do a virtual 6K, and we're going to be giving you a little bit more information about that, but we got word this week that they're giving a $15 discount for all registrations, so we're going to invite you to go to our website, go to our events tab, and find more information about the World Vision Global 6K, and there you can use the code WWD2020 to enter that into your registration to receive $15 off your registration fee. And what it's going to be is going to be an incredible way for us to get out of our homes, to go connect, do a virtual uh, run and walk through our social media platforms. And it's going to connect us in really fun and unique ways. And so mark your calendars, May 17th, and that's the day that we're going to come together for the Global 6K, the virtual run. But that doesn't mean that you virtually run from your couch. You're actually going to be out there running and walking and kind of log in your, log in your time together. And there's going to be more information about that. But that code for the discount is only good until April 1st. So you need to get in and register today. And so we would love for you to join us on the virtual Global 6K. And it'll be an incredible place to join together. Another way that you can connect um, throughout the week is through our, our worship set list. Uh, Carly has been putting together each week kind of with, with a theme in mind to connect us in worship. Uh, through a Spotify playlist and also a YouTube channel that will draw us together. And maybe it's sitting around the house, and maybe it's in those quiet times. You can cue that up and, and listen to a good set of music that's been put together, especially with our Lakeside community in mind. And so that's our community life together. We wish we could be together to shake each other's hands and to greet one another, but you can do that in just a moment when we come up for our greeting time. You can do that online. If you're on the online platform, we encourage you to use that a little bit as well. But also right now, we have a special spotlight for kids. So kids, I hope you're gathered around a, a screen or a, a TV or whatever it might be because we have a special message for you. I don't know about you, but we have been uh, consuming a lot of movies at home, and it's been a good time, and, and hopefully you guys are finding creative things to put together. Puzzles have been put together in our house. And, and one of the puzzles that we've had at our house has been from the movie Toy Story. And so I want to invite you to consider this incredible epic journey with Woody, who's the main character, and all his buddies in this, in this awesome movie. But this is the puzzle that's being assembled in our kitchen and on, on the floor and all the pieces. But I want you to think about this. If this story, if this movie was created only with just Woody, none of his buddies, none of his buddies, if they weren't there, would the story be as good you see, I, I would say no, and what makes a story a really good story are the different characters. Like, you got Slink, you got T-Rex, you got Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, and they're always losing their parts and their pieces. You have Bonnie and Jesse, and as the, as the movies continue to get newer in the, you know, uh, Toy Story 2 and 3 and 4, you had all these other characters like Duke Kaboom. He's an awesome dude. And you got Jesse and you got Bullseye. They're all friends, and they help each other out. There's no way that Buzz Lightyear could accomplish the task. He could never accomplish the mission on his own, neither could Andy, but all together they make up a team. They're working towards a common goal to get all the toys either back to Andy or rescued out of the clutches of the evil villains of these movies, but they are all united in a common purpose. And what connects us, what connects us lakeside friends, my littlest friends that are out there, is that Jesus helps connect us together no matter what. So whether you're at your house together or we're far away and you haven't seen your friends in a while, know that God is connecting us. And there isn't, there isn't one character that's more important, but we all come together to do a beautiful and an awesome and a powerful thing. And that's what we call the church. My little friends, you guys are a part of the church. You're a part of the piece of the puzzle. You're a part of the characters that, that make up the church, that we are on mission together to tell people about God's love. And so when all the, people, all the pieces are put together, there's a beautiful picture that comes together. But right now, you might feel a little bit scattered. You might be a little bit sad. You, you might miss being together and running through the halls of, of, our, of our school that we meet at for Lakeside. But I want to tell you this, that church isn't a building. It's the people that are coming together. And this is one way that we do this for an incredible adventure, but it takes all of us to do so. So we love having our Lakeside Littles a part of our church but we miss having them together. We miss singing that song of blessing that we send, send our kids out to their Lakeside Kids groups. And one day we'll be back again. But until then, we're on an incredible adventure. You're one of the characters and we need you. So continue to check in with us. Continue to ask mom, hey, has Lakeside posted anything new yet today? 
and we'll continue to try to connect our Lakeside Littles uh, together a little bit more. But as we've gathered together, church really isn't about a building, it's about connecting. And so as we move into a time of greeting, I'm going to invite you to use that sidebar. If you're online, uh, on the online platform, just say a quick hello, give a shout out from the whatever house you're at or wherever you're, you're watching and viewing this from, and we'll be back in just a bit. So get a, f- a refill on your coffee, go get a, uh, uh, whatever it is that you might need to, to get to dial in, because we have a message for you that is an Im- invitation for you to step into community, even though we're kind of distanced online. So I'll be back, and we'll continue in just a moment. Greet somebody on online.
Hey, welcome back. I hope you had a chance to greet somebody online and the platform there. And as we gather together, we are excited about the ways in which people are connecting with Lakeside Online through a variety of spaces and places that we're connecting and coming together. And so we're encouraged to see how that's happening. And for those of you joining us online for the first time, this is really only our second time. So if we're counting attendance, you're like at 50%, which is incredible, and you're doing awesome. So we're glad that you're here with us. Now, we just, we just watched um, a video of Psalm 23 kind of put to words. And so we invited a number of people from Lakeside to help us sh- uh, populate those words and share some of the reflections. And so I hope that there was something from that that was a blessing for you, that encouraged you, that you were able to hold on to a piece of that promise or that truth, that you can take that with you throughout the day. And so as we've gathered here in Minnesota, we're kind of on a two-week timeout where we are invited to participate in slowing this virus down. So for the next two weeks, I'm going to invite you to dial in uh, online and use some of the resources that we'll share with you through our weekly updates. But for us, we want to do our part because I know when you wake up and when I wake up, we're, we're checking the news to see what's changed. We wait to see if there's a, a new broadcast or an announcement from the governor. But here, we're trying to do our part as well. But I think if there's one thing that we are learning, that we're discovering, that we are all experiencing through this season, and it's abundantly clear that, that you and I need each other, that we are created for community, we are created for relationships, and it's our hope that by creating these worship experiences, we can kind of close the gap, that we can provide a space for us to come together at the same time and connect and, and draw a little bit deeper into community, into relationship to help you understand, to help you know that you are not isolated, that you're connected more than than you know. And so we all have this deep need. We all have this deep need to be known and, and to belong and to be a part of something bigger. And we find this in community. And we're drawn into community, and this health crisis really tells us what we are missing when we are socially distant from one another. And so I don't know about you, but in our home, we've had some really good movie nights trying to establish some different rhythms, uh, help our kids process all of this. But we've had some epic movie nights, and sometimes we take a projector that we have that's on loan from Lakeside, and we shine it on the ceiling, and we just bring out the sleeping bag. So I don't know how you're connecting, but what draws us to some of our favorite movies, some of our favorite shows, it really isn't about the epic adventure to the top of the mountain. It isn't about the person with the survival token or whatever it is on Survivor. Uh, It's about the characters. It's about the community of people coming together. And so I shared an example during the kids' message about Woody from Toy Story. There we're drawn in because it's a community focus. It's a random bunch of tired toys trying to get all the toys back to Andy. And we love this story. And if you've seen Toy Story 4, I'm just going to say it's incredible. I, I wept at the end of it. It's an, a beautiful story. But there's stories like that that bring us in and draw us in because it's really more about community than it is about the adventure. And so, and another example is Luke from Star Wars. It's about community. It's about a band of outlaws and misfits, a princess with a really terrible hairstyle, droids, and Bigfoot's cousin Chewie, all trying to restore peace to the galaxy. So that's another story that's focused really more around community than anything else. And how about, how about Scotty Smalls? You know Scotty Smalls, don't you? I mean, Without an audience, I can't tell if you're giving me a blank stare, kind of a blank look, and you're giving me a little feedback, so I'm going to assume you have no idea what, you, what I'm talking about. Scotty Smalls? I mean, come on, you're killing me, Smalls. You know the Sandlot? The Sandlot, a, a, an epic story of this, this group of ragtag baseball boys and girls trying to play out their summer dreams in, in the Sandlot while uh, Scotty Smalls accidentally, unknowingly grabs his dad's baseball, which is signed by the Major League Hall of Famer Babe Ruth, and it's this epic adventure of trying to retrieve that ball that was hit as a home run over the fence into the beast's backyard. But creating these moments of community, we love to watch, but community is really what we crave, but I think it's a little bit more than just these epic stories that we watch in our favorite movies. We're all looking to be known, to be loved, to to know that we know that we know that we belong and that, uh, that we are part of something bigger, something bigger than ourselves, that we're participating in something greater than ourselves with others going in the same direction. 
And so this kind of community is what the early followers of Jesus, they were known for. This is what really identified them as people of the way. And when we read one of the best descriptions in Acts chapter 2, we understand this beautiful description of how they came together in community. And I think that you and I think that I would long for this same kind of an experience. Uh, It's community that is uncommon that they create. A bunch of misfits that they're creating community that is quite uncommon, but yet so desirable and so attractive. There's a word that describes this experience, this kind of community that has the power to change people's lives, that welcomes the outcasts, offers healing, restoration, and provision for those that are in need. It's a, it's a community in a, in, a, in a place where care is offered and unconditional love is, is extended. A word that describes this kind of community is a kind of an experience. It's an F word that you only hear inside the church walls, and it's the word fellowship. I think that this, this word fellowship has lost its power I think it's lost its power because oftentimes people have experienced fellowship to be a little bit more fake. And church coffee, churchy snacks, churchy talk, kind of fluffiness about, oh, I'm just so blessed. Sometimes we think it's a little bit fake and this fellowship doesn't feel real. And it's a word that we don't even often use. Guys out there, I dare you to use this fellowship word the next time you're around the bonfire or huddled around the grill for a barbecue and just throw it out there and see what kind of what kind of glances the guys shoot you. But here, I believe it's a powerful word. It's about Christian community in the early church that was authentic, that was real. It was less religious, and it was more about a relationship with God. And this, this is the kind of community that drew people in instead of pushing people out. And so I'm going to invite you to read with me Luke or, uh, Acts chapter 2, which was written by Luke. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, and it begins like this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So that gives us a beautiful picture of what community looked like as the first followers were stepping out to create this movement that we have inherited as the church. There's never been anything like this early community ever before in history, this fellowship of people gathering together. And if you've been with us for this message series called The Way, where we desire to know Jesus and become a little bit more like him, you'll see that they were known for the way that they read and studied the teachings of Jesus. The way that they gathered for prayer and how they surrendered or they devoted themselves to this new way. And that's the invitation that we've been inviting you to participate in for these last few weeks. But like Woody and like Luke and like Smalls, Jesus gathered odd-fitting folks, uh, followers and disciples. He loved them fiercely, and he loved them unconditionally. And because of this unmerited grace, this unmerited love, this common group of people became uncommon followers of Jesus, contagiously attracting people who needed to belong and to believe and to become what God had created them to be, and they drew people into this community. This kind of community focused in common activities like worship, learning from the Bible, praying, sharing, Uh, confessing and serving for the purpose of mutual growth together and the blessing of other people outside of the community. That's That's what fellowship is. That's what community is within a Christian church. And it isn't perfect. And maybe you've had that experience as well. Maybe you've experienced a church or a community or a fellowship that hasn't been quite perfect. But when we look and, and study a little bit or examine the, the community in which it was drawn together in that first century, it was people like Peter who denied Jesus, Judas who sold him out. There were others who were recovering thieves and, and women with colorful pasts. James and John, the sons of thunder as they're known for, They self-promoted themselves above their friends, and even Thomas, he doubted and disbelieved. But the common ground, the common ground that invites us, that excites me, that, that inspires me, that I too can be a part of a community like this, the common ground that brought them together was the reality. It was a condition that they all faced, 
that they knew that would destroy them if it wasn't for this irresistible love of God, a new life that is found in Jesus. Now, where I've seen and where I've witnessed and I've heard stories of people experiencing the beauty and the depths and, and, and the gift of community are those who have gone through a 12-step program. And even those who have gone to AA, they experience this incredible, this irresistible community. The 12-step AA program has its foundations with biblical principles woven in and throughout their program. And here's one of their statements about community. And this, I think, should encourage us as well. They say this about community, that we are a people who normally would not mix, but there exists among us a fellowship. We are a people who normally would not mix, but there exists among us a fellowship. I mean, you have high-level executives. You have gnarled hands of the blue-collar laborer. You have the suburban, you have the urban, and whatever racial background there is, they find themselves in community and fellowship when they get together because they understand the condition that if it wasn't solved, would destroy their lives. I might say it like this about community and our need and our, and our desire and, and, our, and our longing for this is that God's unmerited love creates common ground for an uncommon community. That's our bottom line here this morning, that God's unmerited love creates common ground for an uncommon community. And we read that in the Bible, and I believe that we can experience that here even today. This is influenced by the company that Jesus kept that he gave an example for his followers to actually duplicate and replicate that he, the way he lived and his understanding that they all knew that they didn't deserve any of God's love and neither did the person who was stepping in for the first time, that they were recipients of this unmerited, this, this free gift of God's love. And so this, is, this too is our desire. This is our dream, our vision to create space at Lakeside for people to share life, to experience this kind of community that is actually uncommon in our world a place where we're a people who would not normally mix, but there exists for us at Lakeside a fellowship. When someone is down, that they're picked up. When someone is hungry, that they know that there's food available for them. When someone has less work and needs help, bills are covered. When someone is grieving, that they're comforted. When someone celebrates, we rejoice alongside of them. What was once launched 2,000 years ago, we're invited to continue and participate in. It takes you and it takes me to create this uncommon community that becomes contagious, that becomes attractive. And to do this, it will take us together. And I'm going to invite you in three simple ways to step into this with me. These are invitations that we might be, be able to create a community that is so desirable, that is so attractive, that people in this season of doubt and uncertainty, they find hope, they find life, and they believe that tomorrow could be better than today. And so the first invitation is this. Community invites devotion. It said there from Acts chapter 2 that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now I get it. It's absolutely easy to roll over to say maybe next week. Uh, it's easy to miss, but I want to say community doesn't just happen. It takes commitment. It takes a devotion from, from me and from you. And together, when we are devoted to one another in relationship that's grounded in the ways of Jesus, we will discover life that gives life in community that so many have been searching for, but it takes a commitment. It takes a devotion from us. The disciples, they knew. They knew that they were part of a movement that was both changing their lives and changing the world. And the more that they devoted themselves to it, the more they learned and prayed and shared and struggled and cared and loved, the more they received from it. It's our vision to share life, pursue Jesus, not only just for us in a little huddle at Lakeside, but then also to change the world. A few weeks ago, it was our invitation for Lakeside friends to say, would you consider being a partner with us? This is the invitation to devote yourself to the ministry, to this community called Lakeside. It's an opportunity to say that I'm in, I'm devoting myself to being a part of a community here in the the Southwest Metro. And if you receive a weekly update from us, there will be a spotlight, a highlight about this partner card and an invitation for you to join with us, to devote yourself, and we invite you When you receive that, to print that PDF out, to sign it, whatever it is, send it back to us, snail mail or digital, whatever it might be, but that might be your first 
uh, response to an invitation of devotion, to say, I'm not going to live life just by myself, but devoted in community with others. It's the invitation to be devoted, not only just on your own, but in relationship with God and in a community. And we invite you to be a part of that at Lakeside. The second invitation goes like this. It's a community invites generosity. It said that they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. This hadn't happened before. A kind of community like this didn't exist. We're rich and poor, we're on the same level, and people in need found provision. What people believed once was theirs, they understood was only a gift for them to be used, to be used and to be shared with others that had less. A new community where sometimes people who had possessions would say, I want to help others, so I'm going to sell part of my land and say, give to anybody who has a need. Now, in this world pandemic that we are experiencing, we are watching our country do something that is unprecedented, that has never happened before. The assistance that the government and the banks are, are offering, which seems to be a generous level for those who qualify, will receive an incredible gift to help bridge this financial gap. But here's my invitation to you, friends of Lakeside. What if those of us who aren't lacking as much don't need all of it? What if we gathered the extra and we put it into our compassion fund? What if we were able to bless others whose lives are being really hit hard and we recognize and we want you to know that we see and we hear that many of you, your lives are being majorly impacted by the loss of a job, the decrease in hours, the shift of business or whatever it might be. The first Sunday of our rhythm in the month, we we receive and we invite people to give and share generously to a compassion fund where everything that goes into it goes right back out to meeting real needs. So Lakeside, what if those of us who didn't need all of that could say it wasn't mine in the first place? Let's share it. Let's pool it to meet the real needs that are among us. So some of you I know are hurting and we invite you to reach out to me, shoot me an email or a text, whatever it is, or office at lakesidecov.org and all that will be confidential. But we believe that this invitation into community requires generosity. And that is what we want to be known for and marked by, is a value and a, and a posture of generosity. Now let me share with you the third invitation. And it's community invites authenticity. The comedian and, and the writer, Garrison Keillor, had this radio talk show, and it focused on this little city, this little town that time forgot and decades could not improve the name of it was Lake Wobegon. And the closing words from his radio show every week in the monologue were this. Well, that's the news from Lake Wobegon, where all the women are strong, all the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. Sometimes, it, to be honest, church can feel a little bit like that. That everyone looks good, everybody has their, has their stuff in a pile. Their lives are put together while you know that it can't be true because you know what your life is like. And so sometimes you say, I, I don't feel like I can show up because everything here looks like it's been dressed up. And it's fake. It says there that they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. The key word right there is the word sincere. The word sincere means pure. It's the same inside and out. The writer Luke tells us that this community, people were so transformed by the good news of Jesus and his grace and his forgiveness that it radically, radically uh, impacted and changed how they showed up. That when they showed up together, they took off their masks. They stopped pretending that everything was awesome. They stopped hiding. They got real about their struggles. They ate with sincere hearts and showed up in true community and sincerity and transparency. To me, that's attractive, that's real, that's authentic. Because, I don't know about you, safe and superficial religious talk is often a red flag for me. I mean, easy answers to hard questions, I don't think you like those either. But sitting together, sharing life, being real, growing in relationship with one another and with God, that to me is attractive. This is the kind of vision that Jesus had for the church. And we often think that getting real is a little bit too dangerous or too risky. But it's in that risk of vulnerability that that's when the beauty of God comes out. Fellowship, Christian community is raw and it's real and it's honest and it's hard and it's messy, but I believe that it's worth it. I see this happen most often on men's retreats. When we go away from the regular rhythms of the day and we gather together to retreat, to be real amongst each other, it usually only takes just one guy to be brave. One guy to step out and say, this is really what's going on. And I just pray for that. And the floodgates then open when someone models 
uh, vulnerability that another guy raises his hand and says, well, this is, this is really what's going on. And that, that, friends, is community. Again, when this series was planned, how ironic is it that one of the markers, one of the qualities of the first followers of the people of the way would be community, and now we're separated by screens and we're disconnected, but yet I would say we're maybe even a little bit more connected than we were before. How will you respond to this invitation to create community that is compelling, that's fascinating, that's attractive, that, that the world, that maybe even your neighbor or someone in your family has been longing for, they want to belong to. It's going to take you and it's going to take me to create this uncommon community and ex- to experience this unimaginable love of God. So I'm going to invite you to consider what your next step might be this week. Maybe it's responding to the invitation to become more devoted, to be devoted to showing up, to joining a life group, to beginning some new disciplines in your life, to say, I'm going to be devoted to reading and prayer and inviting someone else into that space as well. Maybe it's something that you have that God's inviting you to share with others, that their needs might be met in a real way to keep their heads above the waterline. On our website is a link to give, and you can text to give at 84321. If you're sensing God stirring something in you to give to that compassion fund, or maybe it's later when you have a conversation in your home to say, what is it that we can share that we might be generous? Maybe that's your response to the invitation of generosity. Maybe it's for you to stop pretending and risk vulnerability because when someone asks you if there's something that we could be in prayer for you about and, and you offer your neighbor's uncle's cat who's sick, I mean, that's, that's okay because we all know that dogs go to heaven and cats, whatever. Um, but because we know that there takes a little bit of vulnerability. Just kidding, I love cats. But in risking vulnerability, it's authentic, and it invites someone to go deeper with you in relationship, to simply take off our mask and to be real, to be real with who you are right now, not your hoped-for future person. But there's also something in there, a condition that will destroy, a condition that if we aren't mindful of, will destroy our life. What invites us to do all of this, what invites us to create community that is compelling, that will be transforming in families' lives, in your life, and in our community's life. What invites us to do this is the condition that we, we all have, that if it wasn't for Jesus, this condition would destroy us, and it's the condition of sin. That God loved us first to send Jesus to us to take away our condition of sin. That it's God's unmerited love that creates a common ground for an uncommon community. That is our desire, but maybe for you it It needs to start there, receiving this unmerited gift of God's grace and love for you. And it's simply saying that, I believe, Jesus, that you died for me, that you rose again, that I might receive this gift and be forgiven, that I'm saying yes to this gift, and I believe and want to live. And if that's your heart right now, and if that is your prayer, we would love to have a conversation. You can reach out to us online. But may one of these invitations start to move you closer and deeper into community. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me, and we'll continue in worship. God in heaven, we give you thanks for the the ways in which you created us not to live in isolation, but in community. Help us in this time to draw closer to you. When it feels like we're separated, when we feel like we're isolated and, 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 and a lot of distance between, that God, you'd use powerful ways and moments and songs and video and chats and texts to bridge these gaps and draw us deeper into community. God, may we risk being vulnerable. May we, what we do, put on display your love and unconditional um, grace for others and that they may experience that as well. God, may we be known for a community and a people who are generous and sharing with all those who have needs. And so God, be with us. Create in us this incredible and this beautiful community that isn't perfect, but we're a work in progress, desiring to become more like you, Jesus. So God, we give you thanks in all things. Amen. We're going to end this morning by singing Great is Thy Faithfulness because of the truth that it sings out that every morning there are new mercies and he is going to provide for us all that we need, even when it feels like there might not be enough. Um, There is enough because of who God is. Um, 
So in this uncertain time, we can just be resting in these truths. Sing out the lyrics that are on the bottom of the screen or just receive this song as Mark and I lead in worship. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou I just want to bless and send you off with these truths. You are created be by God, known, loved, and belonged. Upon you rests the grace of God. May the deep peace of Christ be with you, the strong arms of God sustain you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Amen.